So I don't get out of bed for one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about two? <laughs> Actually, reading something by our close personal friend. What's his name? <laughs> uh, we have so many. <laughs> Narrow it down. Oh, I feel bad. I'm totally blanking on his name. Dave. Um, Dave. Oh my God. How do I know him? Everyone knows Dave. <laughs> Dave, the guy from I I X D A. Yeah. Dave. Uh, Oh, oh I, man, I feel terrible. Like, me too. Don't don't record this. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is the intro, Dave. Uh, seven minutes of just us going, <laughs> you know, you know, Dave. Uh, and he's from Dave. Long Island, and I can't. I'm blanking on his last uh, name. Design I know you ops mean. stuff yeah, and beard, beard, dark hair. Yeah, loves Detroit style pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. This is terrible. We're such bad friends. What is his last name? <laughs> Maloof. Whew. Maloof, there we go. Whoa, thank you. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> well, well it'll, be, it'll just be us going, Dave, and then <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulties. Maloof, <laughs> there we go. There it is. Maloof. There it is. Anyway, so I was reading something by Dave Maloof earlier today about his frustration with the adoption of design ops. And I'll just say thinking, not in the design thinking way, but mm. like from a strategy perspective, right? And and part of his, I don't want to say recrimination, but because apparently small words don't work in this case, um, <laughs> is that, you know, what he's seeing is people are like, well, how do we fit into agile again? Instead of being like, okay, this is really more about strategic thinking and planning. And I think, again, the leap that is not being made either by the practitioners, by enough practitioners, I should say, or by the business side is really not understanding or believing in or thinking about. I don't know what it is. It's probably a combination thereof. The the value and, and the business impact of, and I, and I say these with lowercase letters, design thinking, like thinking from a design perspective. I'm still unsure about like what would cause broad adoption of it? The the post by Dave, which I can link to. And I also saw an article about, again, can't remember his name, but he's leaving Ikea to start a design firm to teach people to lead with design. And he his premise is design will supplant marketing. They'll sell themselves because they're so well designed. I don't think it really you'll you won't get rid of marketing, but maybe marketing will be used for, you know, actual marketing rather than whatever it's used for today, which is to gloss over <laughs> how poorly designed things are. Within this topic of the business value of design work, of design thinking, again, lowercase letters. Right now we can't talk about it enough basically. I read that article, so I, I don't have an opinion on it. Well, go ahead and, and read that article now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. Pause the film. Cue, cue music. <laughs> now, I, I'm still, I still struggle with anything that has ops after it because I start to hear that and I kind of check out as like, this is just another lingo land grab that someone has come up with. Um, yeah. Like how is design ops different from design thinking versus user-centered design versus any other methods that we've been doing for you know, 15, 20 years. And there are nuances with design thinking, I get that, but at the end, it's very much what we've been preaching for a long time. Right, and, and we, do- put the, put the user at the center of the cycle, iterate often, test, iterate, explore, you know, the same. Right, the, the challenge has been and, and continues to be especially in the digital space. It's just so cheap to guess and hope you're right. Mm -hmm. It's so cheap to not talk to people. Yep. Just to build something and put it out there. That's always been the case. 
like design ops isn't doing anything to remedy that, is it? I don't need to poo-poo design ops or pick no, up. No, yeah, I, I don't, I think. I don't get the value that design ops is bringing. Yeah, I think conceptually that's what it wants to do. It's set up a, the same with the whole research ops and, you know, setting up environments so that good design work can happen, right? And to me, that's not necessarily strategic stuff, necessarily. No, it's not, but it's it's promoting the same environments that we've been promoting for a long time, just with a new name, which is cool. You know, if, and if, if the new name helps it gain traction, that's great for everyone. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, I have a hard time getting behind the terminology just as a new term, just for the sake of yeah. it being new. But all for it. Go Dave, go design ops. I don't, I think until we uh, stop talking about, I don't know, is this wrong to say stop talking about design and start talking about business? <laughs> we're not going to have as much of an impact. And I feel like all of these things that keep coming up over time, design ops, design thinking, in my experience, it has to come from the top regardless. So again, think about business and the business has to want it versus the practitioners see a need for it. It's more for large organizations that they are just on their path. They've been doing it one way. Things are generally okay. Right. We're making money. Why would we mess with that? Right. I was just talking to a friend last week about this. He's doing work with a, a large organization and they just have no concept of any of these things, but now they're getting competition. And I'll sound like, well, that's something that can instigate a change in process and culture is right. competition because a lot of companies, they're just keep on keeping on and they don't even realize what they don't know because they've been doing it the same way for 10, 15 years. And I'm talking about from a design standpoint, a, a UX standpoint. Yeah. And until someone comes in and shows them a different way, that's one step, but then you have to show them why it matters and why they should be doing it differently because someone's going to take them over. Someone's taking their money. Usually it comes down to money. Right. Whether it's competition is finally coming along into a space that you've dominated for a while, or I think the other side of, of money that personally I wish more people would talk about is the money that gets wasted mm -hmm. because a process or a product or a service is not as efficient, effective as it could be, right? Yep, I agree. The, the hidden costs. <laughs> the hidden costs, which yeah. are, <laughs> are easy to unhide <laughs> if you go looking for them, right? Right. Do you have any examples of this? I, I have an example did just come <laughs> to mind. <laughs> but this is... This is the thing. It's like, I think this is a good example of not just reducing waste makes more money or you, you lose less money, but also demonstrating that value, right? Hey, we, we pulled this design lever and this thing happened and you made more money or you wasted less money or whatever. Right. So this was several months ago. <laughs> I was on a project. I feel like this example fits both the, it helped with reducing waste, so saving money, and it, it demonstrated that value because we did this project and it led to an outcome that was measurable and positive for the company. And it was very easy, well, not easy, easy, but it was very easy to say, we did this project and we can tie it directly to this outcome and here C level people here's here's the good stuff that we just did and it was design you know it was design thinking i kind of think of a different word for that because like every time i say design thinking i'm like eh, it wasn't really like the capital d capital t thing i digress so we actually brought in to do this project a usability testing on a product that was about to go live that they were building internally should I start completely over? No. Okay. Oh, God. No. That's what editing's for. That's right. The usability testing project led to this next project where we went and we interviewed all the people who were working for this company who were using the app. The entire process was, I don't walk in as an expert on what that company is doing, but very quickly into the interview process, I can see, oh, basically, you know, things start with this person and then go to this person and then back to this person. And then why do you do it that way? Their answer is, well, I mean, that's, that's how we were trained. It's not how we want to do it. We think we should do it this way. And, and this is what I love about, you know, going out and interviewing people is they don't always have the answer. 
but often they're finding ways to work around poorly designed products and services to get their job done. So they've figured out ways to reduce waste, right? And so talking with them led to a big redesign of this application that they had just spent months doing because they were launching a new version of this internal app they'd been working on for like 15 years or something to really design the, the interface of this application and the process through which all the work is done such that only the information that is necessary for each stage of the work is presented to the person doing the work at that stage and the rest of it becomes ancillary. Previously, it was stage one through stage 17. I'm kind of summarizing how it works. If you're, if you do work on stage three, you have to go through one and two to get to three. It doesn't take that long, but it's stuff that gets in your way. And with this company, the more work that they can do in a day, in a week, in a month, you know, the more money they can make. By optimizing this process that they had, we were able to increase the amount of work they did by 30%. And so for a company that has, and this is their, their napkin math, as, as we talked after the project had ended after a month or two. A company that makes $30 million in revenue, 30% is an extra $10 million in revenue every year. That's not going to be the exact number, but you know that's roughly what they were, th they were looking at. And they were hoping with this new app that they might get 10% increase. But it also led to a reduction in errors because one of the things that really slowed things down was having to send work back up the line, as it were to be redone. It wasn't just let's fix this interface. It was let's fix this process that the interface is used to, to run through. We'll reduce errors along the way. So it's an easy way to then illustrate, not even illustrate, to, to show directly to the, the people who run the company. You know, here we spent three weeks saying, stop everything, not literally everything, but let's stop and, and really investigate this and come up with a plan for moving forward. And this is the result. You're potentially making 10 million, 10 million extra in revenue every year because you spent three weeks on really investigating this from a design perspective. That has to have some value, right? Yeah, you would think so. Be, even beyond the, the extra 10 million a year. And <laughs> Right. Because a lot of times what you, we're talking about is process efficiency, improvement, process within the application, mm -hmm. which like we were talking about earlier, it's I think a lot of companies, they do just get complacent with their process, with their software and their organizations. And like you said, the employees kind of knew of a better way, but that's just the way they were trained. So that's just mm -hmm. what they were doing. And no one was really challenging anyone to make that a better process. So kudos for you. <laughs> well, I mean, kudos for, for them for well, well, you uncovered, yeah, and designed the the better solution. And yeah, sometimes the clients get it. I had one that came to me. This is a couple of years ago, so I don't quite remember all the details. But they were looking for process improvements in their software. They had a Salesforce integration, and it was a very convoluted process. And they came to me and said, "Hey, can you?" work on this. Can you help us? And uh, like you, I interviewed all the different employees that touch this process, this flow. And I found out they had one person, a full-time employee whose whole job was to handle exception cases and fix errors because of this flow. <laughs> and that was their job. I don't remember their title, but when I talked to her, that's what she did when she came in the morning until she left at the end of the day. And our, you know, we, I've talked to all these people. I've create a new flow for them, redesigned it to streamline it, fewer pages and just, just thought out the experience a lot better. And they didn't, I won't say they didn't need her anymore, <laughs> right. but they basically took her from a full-time or that role, that need went from a full-time position to just being something that they handled as needed mm -hmm. here and there. Uh, you yeah, know, maybe 10, 15 minutes a day versus a full-time employee. That wasn't the goal of the project. It was really just to broadly make it more efficient, but that was an end result that, like you're saying, it, it wasn't millions of dollars, but you know, one person's salary or 90% you know, of a salary. Right. It's not insignificant. 
so yeah, it goes back to, it's not only revenue that's coming in from a money perspective, but savings from not wasting money. <laughs> right. Which is yeah, I, also beneficial to the business. I, I, I think about like, as businesses grow and they add new capabilities to their offering, whether it's a product or a service or both, you know, if they add new features to their product or, or whatever, so often these are added as if they're standalone things that don't impact anything else, right? Yeah. And so over time, now they have this thing <laughs> that it works, but no one then says, hey, you know, let's, let's look systematically at this entire thing and, and really see, oh, we don't need these things because this does 80% of the work up here and let's just optimize that and get rid of this stuff. And now we have less stuff to manage. And, and that's, you know, we talk about prioritizing cost, and, you know, a lot of businesses don't want to invest that cost to find out how they can save more down the road. You know, they look at the near term, oh, we have to hire a team or someone to do this research and analysis and help us with the strategy. And that does cost some money upfront, but they don't see the long-term goal, the long-term financial gain, I should say. And, and that's why a lot of companies I believe are just, you know, complacent, they get stuck because it's good enough. They're not focused on making things better. They're focused on keeping the lights on and keeping things churning. So what have been some ways that you've been able to show that value beyond the, the example that you just gave, that I just gave, to get people to even start thinking about this? to just kind of scratch that surface is doing evaluations, like site evaluations um, or app, whatever it is, evaluations. Say, you know, here's some areas that I see opportunities for improvement. Let's go talk to some users and you just kind of build a case that way. It's hard without knowing their business really well to show financial gains, theoretical future gains, because <clears throat> you're not quite sure. But usually a savvy business person can start to extrapolate all right, well, I see this, this is going to make this more efficient and kind of the domino effect. So I feel like it's a conversation on selling research in general and what are good ways to do that. You, know, you and I have done a lot of work around discovery workshops where we kind of just go in and we just start sharing ideas and gathering information from the business and saying, okay, there's opportunities here based on just what we've heard in this first mm -hmm. meeting. And so it's really getting them to think about things beyond the day-to-day. -day. Yeah, it's been the same for me, almost always starting the conversation at that high level is not going to resonate. The metaphor I, I rely on for this is it's really difficult for people to get past the fire du jour. Mm -hmm. And if you can get them past that, then, then you can have that conversation of, oh, well, this got on fire because of these decisions you either made or didn't make way upstream. Let's talk about how we can fix that. It's getting them to just stop. Like you said, like stop focusing on the fires and start thinking about ways that, you know, there are opportunities to make things better and they just have to stop mm -hmm. and open their eyes sometimes and be open-minded. Because like I said, when they're in that churn and there's just day-to-day -day putting out fires and do today what we did yesterday, because it's working, those are the hardest people to get through to because they're just not focused on improvements. Yeah, so that's, that's usually my way into those conversations is that doing some evaluation or, or even potentially some research that's somewhat generative if, if they're at that level of maturity within the organization at its core is just getting out and talking to people, right? Not completely randomly, not, you know, intercepts on the street of, Hey, do you use my product? Let's talk. There's anything wrong with that, but you know, having a plan and going out and talking to people and then bringing that information back and really thinking about it and then maybe going out and talking to more people. I was just talking to a customer of mine a few weeks ago, I guess. I did some research for them. They were telling me how they were meeting with their partners, um, business partners, and some of their higher level stakeholders. And they were having some tough conversations about changes to the app, changes to their strategy. They basically used my research as ammunition to justify the changes that they were making. And so they were really excited because they could take all those quotes that we gathered from talking to people like you were saying, because those seem to resonate a lot with those people in the, the big offices. And when they were challenging the design team, they could say, well, we talked to people and here's what we heard. Mm -hmm. And this is actual feedback from, from users. Like I said, that was ammunition that was critical and useful for them to, to get their ideas through. 
So yeah, a little bit different context from starting from scratch, but just the idea of you get those, like you said, talking to people on the street, randoms, even if you have to, anything that can kind of help lead some credibility to, you know, the changes that you're advocating for. Excuse me. Do you have a pulse? <laughs> do you have time to give me feedback? Well, on it's that? about to get higher. <laughs> That's right. One way or the other, you're either going to get very happy or very angry. <laughs> That that voice of the customer really does resonate with the people in the big offices, like you say. What I find, I'll say, interesting is that then doesn't make them say, or a lot, a lot of them, not all of them, obviously, but it doesn't make a lot of them say, "Oh, we should be doing this more often and more of it." And then I, and then it makes me think of the the companies that don't do it at all, right? Right? That have a CEO or someone who say, and I, I've said this before, but I think of one particular case where the CEO was very fond of saying, well, I've thought this through. The people doing the research say, well, here's, you know, the voice of the customer says this. And the CEO is like, well, that may be fine, but I've thought it through. So we're going to do it my way. That company ended up getting bought by another company because the second company said, hey, that's a very pretty application you've got that does some amazing things, we think. And they spent, you know, a few million dollars buying the company and then attempting to integrate it into their own systems. And it was so poorly put together and so poorly thought through that they had to scrap it all and get rid of the people that they had brought over. And it was just, I don't know how many millions of dollars were wasted. Many is, is my guess. If that CEO had just been open to listening to what the customers were saying, that might have had a better outcome for both companies. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure the CEO got his exit and did pretty well, but it's not, that's not the kind of exit that I would want no. personally. We don't look fondly upon it. I do not and never have. <laughs> and when I see him at the cafes, I'm like, you, sir. When you see him at the cafe, you say, I'll have a tall latte. That's right. Because he's working there. Right <laughs> that's because he's working there. Yeah. No, no, he, he probably owns the place. Yeah. Bastard. Well, and you know, and that's, that's kind of the thing. It's like, this ends up working out for a handful of people. That's and a so, for some people. I know. And so it's like, well, what's the incentive? I just made, you know, $10 million exiting this company that I sold that I didn't talk to a single user and not that that is the norm, but everyone acts like it is the norm. It's weird. People, right. people are weird. That's my new business plan. What's your new business plan? create a crappy application and get bought. Not that that's a new idea, but sold. I, I love it. I'll buy it. Win-win. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest exit ever. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I will pay you to stop that idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think what we're saying is, Matt, if I may summarize, mm, is leave your office and go talk to people. That should be the tagline of this whole <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Just please go talk to people. Go talk to people. Yeah. Don't lead them, but you know. Don't delete them. <laughs> don't no. Don't lead them. You know. Oh, don't lead them. Yes. The the back of my mind fears when I say go talk to people is you know they're like oh okay hey if I made an app that made your life better would that make your life better? Uh, oh, it would. So, okay, I'll make that. I think that's a whole other episode for our show. <laughs> yeah. How to actually talk to people. You know, for people like ourselves, we sometimes need a refresher. For sure. It's a skill. Skills are meant to be practiced. So that's right. <laughs> Come exactly. on. Exactly. All right. Well, let's call it. All right. Good chat. Good chat. See you next time. Peace out, y'all. All right. Good show, people. Good show. <laughs>